So now we're going to start with the skin, which is what we call the integumentary system. And the reason we tie the integumentary system to tissue types is because the skin really is just layers of tissue stacked up on top of each other. And it makes it very easy to see how tissues all throughout the body get layered in order to do the functions that the body needs organs to do. And so it's a really nice way to kind of bridge between more complex systems and thinking about the body in terms of tissues. So let's start with the functions of the integumentary system. Now this is just a quick list. We're gonna talk about each of these in detail in just a second, but just so you can see what's going on. So regulating body temperature. So we can cool the body, we can um, heat the body, depending on how much blood we allow through the skin um, and through the evaporation of sweat. Water has such a high specific heat that it takes a lot of energy to break those hydrogen bonds. So we draw out a lot of heat energy from the body to get that sweat to evaporate. And that keeps our body at the temperature we need it to in order to function. But we can also, you know, close off those blood vessels running in the skin and push more blood into the internal organs. And so we can um, heat up the body based on how we are utilizing our skin. Protection, there's lots of things that we need to protect against. Abrasion, so like, like physical like scraping or bacteria, dehydration, and ultraviolet radiation. Skin plays a part in protecting us against all of these things. Sensation, so you have thousands of nerve endings and specialized nerve structures that are there to detect temperature changes, touch, pressure, pain, to varying degrees so that we can fully interact with the world around us. Excretion, we lose things like urea, water, and salt in our sweat, so we can actually get rid of some um, like waste material, as it were, um, through the skin in order to, you know, um, like, you know, get rid of things that would um, otherwise gum up the works, as it were. Immunity. Skin is hugely important to our immune system. It is the first line of defense. It's what keeps us from getting bacterial infections all the time because our skin is this like protective barrier that bacteria can't really get past unless something out of the ordinary happens. And the other thing that skin has to help with immunity is a specialized set of cells called Langerhans. And these are found in the epidermis and they are there to like be like the uh, guards on duty, um, watching for any bacteria getting past the skin as a barrier. It's a blood reservoir. So we have blood that can pool in our skin. Um, and circulate there and um, this allows us to you know regulate heat um, but just by having blood underneath the skin we can get rid of some excess heat and then finally vitamin d um, we need ultraviolet radiation to activate the process of making vitamin d but that process of making vitamin d occurs in our skin so it's really important for just our overall health that we have healthy skin. So what are the cell types we see in the skin? So we have keratinocytes. Keratin is a specialized protein that waterproofs the skin um, and it's what allows the outermost layer of our skin to not um, just be, you know, constantly oozing water. 
We have melanocytes. These are specialized cells that produce melanin. Melanin is the brown pigment in the skin. Langerhans we talked about just a little bit ago, but they actually develop in the bone marrow and transport through the bloodstream to reside in the skin. So they migrate to the epidermis and they are, you know, watching for pathogens and acquire antigens in order to, you know, help the immune system detect uh, pathogens. And then we have Merkel cells, which are specialized cells that are involved in sensation. So talking a little bit more about melanocytes. So melanocytes are found um, in the skin and they produce pigment and then that pigment called melanin is pumped into the surrounding cells. So we don't look polka dotted um, when you know you view um, an entire human skin. You know the skin looks like one consistent color because those melanocytes are moving melanin into the surrounding cells. There are two different types of melanin. There's uh, eumelanin, which is um, EU and then melanin, and it is the brown pigment. And then we have pheomelanin, which is the reddish pigment of our skin. And then this is what the skin looks like overall. We are going to focus in on the epidermis for our next portion. And um, so we're just gonna talk about this very tip top of the skin. We will get into these other sections um, in our next video. So similarly to what we discussed with like the functions, this is just an overview. We're gonna talk about each of these in turn, um, and we're gonna start deepest to closest to the surface. So we're gonna start down here and work our way up to the top. So starting down here, you can see the dermis, um, just to orient you, um, that's the dermis down there. And then right above that, we have the stratum basale. So this is the most physiologically active. That means that these are the cells that are doing the most jobs. They're going through mitosis at a very rapid rate. So it is the incredibly active section. So this is where Merkel cells are located. We also have melanocytes in here. Um, we have a lot of cells going on in this section. Then we have the stratum spinosum. That is this major section here. Um, it's only eight to 10 cells thick. It's a very thin layer. And this is where the cells kind of look like they have spiny projections, and that's how it gets its name. Stratum granulosum. So this is where we have um, keratinocytes working. This is where they're most physiologically active. And so what keratinocytes are going to do is they are going to produce keratin and they're going to pump that into the surrounding cells. And the keratinocytes, as they produce keratin, keratin actually kills off the cell. So as the cell fills up with keratin, it actually dies. And um, once the cell is fully filled with um, keratin, it, it will no longer be a living cell. And this is only three to five cells thick, so you can start to see how we're getting real thin here. And then we have stratum lucidum. This is not found in hairy skin, so anywhere where we have skin that has hair, we will not have this layer. Um, so most of the body does not have this, but the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet do have this skin um, and because we, we don't usually have hairy palms, although you could end up with a mutation that does 
give um, Harry palms and Harry souls. And then this is again three to five cells. Most of the cells here are not alive. By the time they move out of the granulosum, they are fully keratinized and so they are dead. Um, so they are not alive anymore. And then we have the stratum corneum. This is the outermost layer of the skin and this is the least physiologically active. Um, the cells are continually being lost or shed. Um, and you can see here this cell is starting to like stand up because it's going to flake away. Um, so this is a huge layer of dead cells all stacked up on top of each other. And this is what really protects against bacteria because bacteria infect a cell. Um, and in order to do that, the cell has to be alive with keratinocytes that have been fully keratinized, there's no way for them to infect them. So they just end up sitting on top of this um, stratum corneum. It also is great for ultraviolet radiation protection because again, ultra ultraviolet radiation corrupts the DNA. It causes damage to the DNA. So in these dead cells, the DNA is already broken apart and it no longer exists. So any radiation that hits these cells is not going to do anything because the cells don't have any DNA for it to corrupt. This is 25 to 30 cells thick, so much thicker than the previous two layers. And you can see, like I said, all of those lovely stacks there. And again, remember, we just talked about this top section of the skin. This is all we talked about. Um, so we have a lot left to go. Um, and some really, really fascinating things um, that we will hit in our next lesson.